It was a day full of unforgettable and even unpredictable moments, many of them designed with the cameras in mind. From the first handshake across the border, the first step by North Korea's Kim Jong-un into the South, to the unscripted scene where Kim pulled South Korea's Moon Jae-in briefly to the north. Who would have thought the North Korean dictator could seem so charming? Much of the summit was deeply symbolic, a traditional Korean honor guard. Traditional music and food, even soil from the north and south mixed together to plant a tree that dates back to the start of the Korean War, 68 years ago. That was followed by a walk in the woods and a long private chat by the two leaders. It was all very friendly and peaceful, right down to the arms raised in victory. Exactly the message later delivered in the summit communique by President Moon. There will be no more war on the Korean peninsula, he says. A new age of peace has begun. The document, signed by both leaders, calls for a formal end to the Korean War and the complete denuclearization of the peninsula through negotiations with the U.S. Kim says he laments the fact that promises in previous agreements were never kept. But this communique doesn't lay out a method or timetable for denuclearization either. That's a concern, says a former U.S. ambassador to South Korea. A lot of good intentions there. Uh, ambitious intentions, if you will, but uh, a lot of uh, a lot of work still to be done. But on the streets of Seoul tonight, there is a new sense of hope. Not long ago, Kim Jong Un was threatening us with nuclear weapons, says Shu Dayo. Now I think things are really changing. So let's talk with Sasha, joining us now from Seoul, where it's already Saturday morning. And Sasha, as you say, there is hope clearly, but how believable is this sudden outbreak of, of warmth and reason? Well, that's a very good question, Andrew. Uh, you know, on the streets of Seoul here in South Korea, there's always been a lot of skepticism about Kim Jong-un. They don't trust him to keep his promises, just like they didn't trust his father or grandfather when they were in power. I'll give you an example. Both leaders agreed to this complete denuclearization in writing at this summit. But uh, Kim Jong-un never actually used those words. In fact, he's never said that publicly, and he certainly never said that he is willing to give up all his nuclear missiles. Right. And, and Sasha, you look at all that's transpired. I mean, a 12-hour summit, an unprecedented look at the North Korean leader, and a very different picture than we're used to. That man, he really is an enigma, and as much of an enigma as his country is, really. Uh, you know, South Korean intelligence services and the Americans have been looking a lot at him. He can be extremely charming, but at the same time, he can be scheming, crafty, and very, very smart. And we may well have seen both sides of that character to an unprecedented extent during this summit. Sasha Petrosik in Seoul. Thanks very much. So the two Korean leaders made nice on, on many issues, including one that has deep personal meaning to the South Korean president himself, family reunification. And the date to watch for, August 15th, National Liberation Day in both countries. That's when families separated since the Korean War 60 plus years ago will reunite. Since a previous Korean summit in 2000, there have been family reunions on and off, but nothing since October 2015. And President Moon Jae-in's own parents, they fled North Korea in the 50s, and his mother's last wish is to see just one more time the sister she left behind. Their first and only reunion was almost 15 years ago.